Well, I was looking at something. It, it was, you know, the art of the Phantom Menace. Someone would put it into a one of the Star Wars modeling groups I'm in. Yeah. And it was a picture of them painting Q-tips to put in the Mos Espa the arena. Yeah. Yep. I remember... To be honest, I saw that in a meme, but I thought it was actually really cool how they did that. They, and they, did you they guys can... know the waterfall in Naboo was uh, salt? I did not. It's salt being poured. Also, which also which waterfall on Naboo and in which movie? In The Phantom Menace. Right where, where the ships are taking off. You know, you got out yeah. the palace, there's a waterfall right there. Yeah, because yeah, I remember in episode two, there was a scene where like Anakin and Padme are like having some sort of picnic and there are waterfalls in the background. I oh. mean, shit, even Jar Jar Binks was, you know, you had Ahmed Best on set in yeah. the costume and the costume wasn't just one of those stupid fucking mocap suits that they wear nowadays. He had the head on to give them eye, uh, line of sight as well. Yeah. They animated his face and neck and they uh, made some changes. But the whole, you know, the wibbly wobbly walk. Yep. Yeah. Was Ahmed Best doing that practically on set? Um, but yeah, Stargate, <laughs> Stargate, I will give you. Uh, I think uh, I think Battlestar Galactica, even though it's adapted from another um, uh, another television series, I think that it was it, it, it. And you're talking about someone who watched Battlestar Galactica in the '70s on television and mm-hmm. adored it. I had the movie. Uh, on VHS yeah. back in the day, I I watched the hell if if there was a Battlestar marathon on on Sci-Fi when it was called Sci-Fi and not Siffy, uh, I would sit syphilis. down and that's what I called it. I, I would watch it, and I was the grognard who initially said they're remaking Battlestar Galactica. Fuck that noise! I want that's not Sometimes my bad. That's my not Star Wars. having. The emotional attachment to the first thing you came around, obviously. Oh, obviously. Oh, but like having that, not having that attachment when they remake things, sometimes uh, you get pleasantly surprised. Right, and it, uh, yeah, it, that's absolutely going to be yeah. true, and it's why I can say that I understand why the people who like V for Vendetta, the movie, like yeah. V for Vendetta. I loathe it because I was a longtime fan yeah. of the original series. That's why I loathe it. It's a beautifully shot movie. Yeah. V, uh, uh, Vigo. That's not Vigo Mortensen. Kurt. That's, um... Yeah, uh, what... He's, he plays V. Uh, Agent that's Smith. That's Elrond. It's Elrond. It's Agent Smith. It is... It's Hugh. Uh, Hugh... Megatron. I can't think of his name. It's... Fuck me. Anyway. You fuck me. You fuck me. Hold on. I got this. Yeah. Oh, I'm Bibi to the rescue! Why am I... I'm so old. Don't get I, I honestly cannot. Hugo think of it. Weaving, thank Hugo you. Hugo Weaving, you. yeah. I'm thinking Borg. Yeah. I Borg. I Borg. Um, yeah, it's the and not having that attachment, but you know, being being a child, being a child of the '70s and '80s, I haven't attached. All my stuff is what's being made now, yeah. and I have <laughs> I have that attachment, and I, that's not going to go Thanks, away. Um, it's. It was hard, but I, I can tell you exactly the moment. I can tell you exactly how it happened. I just happened to be flipping through channels with nothing on, yeah. and I happened to cross a marathon and fucking 33. I, and from I that remember James moment almost forward, will forever be my admiral. I, I well, And see, that's the thing. I've got another friend of mine, uh, Jeff. You've never met uh, You might have met, met him. I call him Liberal Jeff. Um, because you know, he he is so liberal that he makes me look like Hugh, Rush Limbaugh. I make you look like Rush. Limbaugh. You do, you do. Um, <laughs> anyway, Jeff uh, Jeff and I had this discussion when I first converted, and he was the exact same goddamn way as I was. Yeah. He's like, Lauren Green is a goddamn national tre- treasure. He is my he is my Adama, but you know, and no. Uh, I broke and I watched 33 and I finally got him to break and he finally it took him years to finally admit that the new one was better but uh, new Battlestar Galactica is ab- but the old Battlestar Galactica was brilliant too because you had you know you had oh there's some amazing things on 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 it like the gems of all the ideas oh like yeah they did Ronald D Moore didn't make fun of the original no, Battlestar Galactica not at all he embraced it he really really did he just added the whole post 9 11 um 
spin on it, plus uh, his experiences of being in a submarine. Uh, when you say the post-9-11 spin, what do you mean? Well, like, uh, the whole Battlestar Galactica, um, it came about post-9-11. Like, the, the mentality of, like, a lot of the characters. But that was there in the original, though. Well, no, he amped it up. Like, if you listen to the podcast. Okay. But, yeah, anyhow. You know, I, I'm wondering. I mean, it's there, but, like, no, and then no, the no doubt like, it's there, there. there's, like, a cartoony aspect to the 78. Like, the conflicts are there. Like, more amped up the drama to its, like... Like, he took Baltar it in, got to the point where he was, like, comically evil in the 78. Well, in the, in the 78 series, he, wa- you know, it, he wasn't a part of the fleet. Yeah. He no. he absolutely consciously betrayed the fleet, yeah. the, the colonies, and he went on to become the supreme leader of yeah. the Cylons. Baltar was a great character. Yeah, the, the 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 new take on on Baltar, Baltar was the and best. even the new even the new take on Starbuck, which I again yeah my you were my, a Dirk Benedict guy oh uh, hell yeah I was who didn't love Face Man no I, I love I mean I grew up with the eighteen more than anything right um, I will take Face Man and Howling Man Murdoch to the day I die and I but. But you know, yeah. the, the, the foul mouths, you know, yeah. getting into fights. That wasn't Starbuck. Starbuck was the suave ladies, man. But Apollo and Starbuck. They were like the, the hot shots, the, you know, the, the pilots that could just go out there. And mm. that was the other thing. Like, there were some really great space battles in the, oh, the reimagined yeah. shit. But it was not a movie that was for space battles. Right. So, anyhow. So. I digress. Joey, can you think of any adaptations that are better than their source material? I've, yeah. got, another, I've got another uh, one. Oh, I boy. cannot, to be honest. Oh, I so have one. What's that? What's up? Star Wars, the Clone Wars television series. Oh, yeah. Wait, what's that adapted? For? Oh, wait, is that adapted? of the movie? Yeah. Of the movies. Oh, I, oh, I thought you meant. We're like, taking it loosely, but yes. I like, thought you meant like. How the 2008 was adapted from, like, that uh, Karkovsky cartoon, Clone Wars, from, like, 2003 to 2005. That's a good one, but... Yeah, that that was really good. Yeah, and I know a lot of people love that, that I still vision. No, I still love... Well, I still love that... that it's a different thing. thing. Especially that scene where Grievous takes on all the Jedi at once and fucking kicks their asses. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway... Um. What else can I? Anything else? Any? I. I, I mean, mean, I, I, I keep I, going on and on, but. Can I ask? Can I? Uh, I'm sorry. This has been in my head for a while. Oh boy. Can I point out some more Harry Potter stuff for you? Oh no. <laughs> well, Here we go. can I at least? I knew this was gonna be. Oh, uh, and on well, that note, ladies and gentlemen, we've been mono. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want. Two Wingardium things. Leviosa. One, two things. It's Leviosa. One, one. Which Dumbledore do you prefer? Oh. I. Prefer the more gentlemanly. It's tough because I prefer the more uh, gentle, um, like father-like figure of Richard Harris, because that's what I enjoy. And he was also really great in um, the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh God, yeah, Jim he Cabezel. was. However, Michael Gambone did bring and see. I pulled both of those actors out of my hat. Yeah, he did. Uh, Michael Gambone was interesting in the sense that he. Bought like like uh, an authority. Uh, he also he bought had the, like the wizardy authority, but like the father, like the grandfatherly figure, I think was better uh, exemplified. But by he, but the if I may, I think Michael Gambone also brought he brought that like mischievous twinkle yes, to Dumbledore's that's what, that's, eye. Yeah, yes, and uh, to be honest, I actually kind of well, I Gambone was more really gray point, but, and like he was more Gandalf the gray, where Gandalf the white was more Richard Harris. Uh, to be honest, um, I actually like. Uh, Gambin better because uh, I feel like Dumbledore as a character is supposed to sort of fit two roles. Like, Mm -hmm. he's supposed to fit the wise mentor character and the kick-ass spellcaster. Yeah. Harris, I felt, was really good at that sort of wise mentor, but I couldn't really see him as the kick-ass spellcaster. Well, if he had lived, you might have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean... If you look at the movies that he had to work with, he wasn't a kick-ass spellcaster in those books. books. Yeah. That that came later. You were on, just being so. introduced to Harry Potter. Yeah. It was yeah. just like. So the other the other thing. It's kind of for me. It's kind of yeah. like the prequel. The difference between original trilogy Yoda and prequel Yoda. Yeah. Like they're 
the same but also different. Sure. Yep. And Absolutely. Like, well, and and and, and Michael Gambone was Michael Gambone was more uh, prequel era, whereas uh, Harris was uh, original trilogy yeah. era. Yeah, exactly. I'll give you that. Yeah. What were you gonna say? No, I, I was gonna say Dumbledore was always like a do sex machina. You know, he um, you could bring Dumbledore in a situation. He could have solved it. He could have probably finished Voldemort, but the whole thing, like he could have finished Voldemort in the first few books. Not if, really. <laughs> Yeah, he's that. He, he he had one of the. He always had one of the. Uh, he had the older one from the beginning. He could have ended Voldemort if he yeah, really wanted the, to. Horcruxes. Horcruxes. Thank you. the The whole point of it is the whole point of the books is Dumbledore, uh, letting Harry come into being <clears throat> and growing up as an adult. That's that's Harry. It, the book is called Harry Potter. Yeah. So, like, it's Dumbledore enabling him and shepherding him right. along his way. And Rob brings up a really good point. Uh, Highlander TV show. I only oh, watched, yeah. I only watched some of the Highlander TV oh, show. Oh, gosh, don't even get me on the continuity of the movies. I can't even. I watched <laughs> Endgame. Only... I cannot. I was such a uh, Adrian Paul and Christopher Lambert fan. And when those two faced off, that was the biggest disappointment. There is only one Highlander movie. Hey, the second one is only... pure... Unadulterated drink a bit a bottle of whiskey cheese. Okay, you don't want. Uh, wow, I used to be able to Ramirez! say. Yeah, what, 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 what's what's the whole uh, spiel that uh, Sean Connery goes through? I, I haven't Lego watched Sanchez, it. In, I haven't watched it in twenty five fucking years. There can be only one. There can be only That's one, right. except can... the six sequels that follow. Any? Adrian yeah. Paul's Highlander was fantastic. If you if you watch yeah it, 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 beyond the first one uh, all the movies are dreck. Um, oh, I just show, oh another great adaptation. Oh, here we go. That I just showed to Joey the other night. The Crow. The Crow. Fan- there is only one Crow movie, by the way. Yes. You don't need to go see Iggy Pop in Crow City of Angels. <laughs> oh gosh. What? Don't bother with that. Yeah. Well, he didn't play the Crow. He was the bad guy, if I remember right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the crow was a fantastic, fantastic adaptation, and and right there with the original uh, soundtrack too. The soundtrack should, was fan. We should have phenomenal. an old episode on the Punisher, and we could talk about Punisher um, oh. games versus Punisher TV show versus oh uh, no you can versus you, Dolph Lundgren Dolph Punisher. Lundgren versus Thomas Jane versus Ray Stevenson yep. versus uh, John Bernthal. Yep. Well, I think that'd be a great combo. How we could con- compare the Daredevil movie to the Daredevil TV series. John Carpenter's series. The Thing versus the 1956 thing? No. Well, well um, actually, you know, that's not the first time Daredevil's been on a TV show. Say what now? So, in the 1980s, late 80s or early 90s, they, try, they, they did a thing on broadcast television where they were bringing back The Incredible Hulk as played by uh, Bill Bixby mm-hmm. and Lou Ferrigno. Which was the TV show from the 70s and early 80s. Okay. And in these movies, they did The Trial of the Incredible Hulk featuring Matt Matt Murdock Murdock and Daredevil. And then they actually had the other one that they did. I don't remember what the name of it was. Um, And absolutely uh, is hysterical and atrocious. They brought Thing or, or Thor. So you had Thor on television as the you know the Norse god Thor, it was not it was not Thor as you know him in the comics. It was a beer swilling kind of. Wait, think, that could think, have been the new one. That could be the new. One. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh God, we need to find we need to find these Incredible Hulk movies. I think there were three of them. Into, please stand by, viewer. Um. Then. Anyway, can I sit, get back to my second point about Harry Potter? Go for sure. it. Sure. Um, I actually prefer how they handled Nagini's death in the movie better than the book. The whose death? Voldemort's snake. Oh. And and yeah, like in the in the book, it was just like they had just revealed Harry was dead, and it was like then the Neville uh, Voldemort spots Neville in like the crowd, and he's got the Sorting Hat. And he's just like. You come here. Magics him over, like puts the hat on his head, sets him on fire, spins him upside down. Then Neville basically just breaks out of it, grabs the sword out of the hat, and like slices Nagini. Mm-hmm. But in the movie, it was like instead Neville makes this inspiring speech before pulling out the sword. Harry reveals this is alive. 
well, continues on elsewhere. And then, like... It ruins the momentum. Yeah. Also, I do like how in the in the movie, Harry's fight with Voldemort is separated from everything else. Because, like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's something Harry would do. Like, Try to w- get, keep the action away from everybody. Yeah, make sure everyone else was yeah, safe. Makes sense. And, like, in the movie, uh, every Harry's, like, in that final sort of cusp with Voldemort's... And it kind of looks like Harry's losing, and it looks like Ron and Hermione are about to die to Nagini. Then Neville comes in and saves the day with the sword. And and then, basically, the tide turns and Voldemort is killed, which I really liked. Also, I like how in the movie there's no body, but meanwhile in the book, Voldemort's body was just sort of there, and they just piled him on with the rest of the dead. Made him no better than the commoners, right? All right, so 1988, 1989, and 1990. 1988 was The Incredible Hulk Returns, hopefully on the verge of curing his Hulk condition. Banner meets his colleague, Don Blake, who is mystically linked to a Viking warrior, Thor. Don Blake? Wait. That is Thor's alter ego on Earth. Oh. Oh, and it's on Prime Video. Oh, oh boy. God. Watch. Well, it is on Prime Video. Then you've got the trial of the Incredible Hulk. When Banner is held as a witness to a violent crime linked to the Kingpin, the fugitive is helped See, by lawyer a podcast. You Matt Murdock. And, and talking over it. <laughs> who is also the superhero Daredevil. And the third one. The finale of the television series about David, Dr. David Banner. He's not even called Bruce on the old TV show. They called him David Bruce Banner. I don't know why. Uh A scientist who transforms into a mighty, larger-than-life creature called Hulk when he gets angry. Desperately attempting to purge himself of this monster-like ego, Banner sneaks into a research laboratory. During the critical experiment to purge him of the Hulk once and for all, a spy sabotages the laboratory. Banner falls in love with the spy, Jasmine, who performs missions only because her sister is being held hostage by Jasmine's superiors. Banner and Jasmine attempt to escape from the enemy agents to rebuild their lives together. To, but the Hulk is never far from them. To be honest, when you said that Hulk was being experimented on to get rid of it, I was going to be like, don't say Hank Pym. Don't say Hank Pym. No. No Hank Pym in this one. No, no wife beater in this one. Hank Pym was a wife beater. Oh, <laughs> gosh. What? Dude, Such a young Pilots. kid. Yeah. I got, and it has Pasquale's nothing to like, do with Michael Douglas. Pasquale's like, I really want to go home and you just won't shut the fuck up. No, I was <laughs> just like, yes, let's talk about Marvel's seedy underbelly. Yes, uh, in the 1970s, yeah. Hank Pym slapped his wife, Wasp, in a fit of anger. And this was Janet Van Dyne? Yes. No, this was no. It was uh, well, yeah, no, no. It's uh, yeah, no. It was Janet Van Dyne. Derp, yeah, Janet Van Dyne. Harpa darpa darp carpa doop. Harpa darpa deep. So yes, it was. It, they did a much better job of um, not treading that territory. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there, there, look, there have there have always been points in in comic history, in movie history, television history. We've made questionable decisions in the past. We all get this. And you know what? Some of the decisions that we're making right now that we think are perfectly sane and rational, our great-grandchildren are going to look back and go, what mm. the fuck was wrong with these people? Yep. You hey, always... I'm going through a really bad one right now. I'm watching Gotham. God, that show, that show that started show off with so, so much premise. That show is such a shitty premise. And yet, no, after season not. one... No, season one blew Season two started getting crazy because it started bringing all these villains, okay, from the Batman. What out the Batman? So we're getting the Riddler. We're getting Penguin. We're getting Clayface at once shows up. The Mad Hatter shows up. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting Mr. Freeze and all this, and Batman's nowhere. Batman's still a 12-year-old kid. I'm like going, how do I hate, how do I keep watching the show? But you know, it's fascinating, and I keep watching more and more of it. Uh, you know, we're I, not in school. You don't have to raise your hand every time you want to make a point. He does. Well, I, well, I want to make sure I can get my thing in. I want to make sure you guys know I want to say something. So You, guys you want to get your thing over. in? Hey-oh. I just don't want to be glossed over. Go okay. for it. Okay, so 
something I love about Gotham, uh, it, and this is kind of funny. So, Cameron Moynihan on that show played essentially the not Joker. the Joker, but yes, the yeah. Velasco. He brothers. went from playing the Joker to playing a Jedi Knight in in the Jedi and Fallen, Fallen Order, Order. Game. yep, and. Which is the exact opposite path Mark Hamill took, because he went from playing a Jedi Knight in the original trilogy to playing That's Joker. That's a very good point. Oh, by the way, Dad, question. Who do you like Mark Bettle, Hamill better as? The Joker. Joker. I was going to say the Joker. Joker. <laughs> the Joker, you got better range as. I, the, the Joker? The Joker. If it wasn't... Fire Lord Ozai the Joker. or the Joker? Oh, Fire Lord Ozai. The Joker. Joker. Mm-hmm. The Joker gave him the most range. Honestly, right. uh, the only thing I would say is better than the Joker is his performance as Luke Skywalker in Last Jedi. Okay. Also, I just thought of something else that ticked me off about the Last Airbender movie. Oh, oh God. The fact that they show the fact that right right from the start they show off the Firebender's uh, the Fire Lord's face like they don't even attempt to hide it. It's mm. just like meanwhile in the show they keep his face hidden until the season three premiere and. and that really helps build up, like, a sort of fear, I guess. Like, what the hell does this dude He's look one like? They shouldn't have dude. even showed it at all. Well, intimidation. Sauron. But, I guess, but, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to do a final fight without showing off his face. I have him wear a mask. Hood. Ooh, there you go. I get you. Hey, I feel you. Let's hire us. Look, the, you know, the simple fact of the matter is, even if you don't pick at the nits that make it a bad adaptation, it was yeah. just a bad movie. It was yeah. badly acted. Oh, yeah. The, and, and again, you know, I'm sitting there watching. Aang had no life to him. There was no yeah. life in that kid's eyes. He was, a, he was not a good fit for that role. The kid could have been a brilliant actor, mm-hmm. but not in that role. He just he did not have the life or the vim or no. the vigor of uh, actor of first, Aang. stunt double to do action scenes later. And on top of that, again, so you so you had bad, bad acting from your three, actually four leads if you count Zuko. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at the four main characters, there was bad acting. Dev Patel chewed so much goddamn scenery in that fucking movie. I swear to God, he he was picking splinters out of his gums for weeks. <laughs> wow, he was terrible. He was great in Slumdog Millionaire. He was great on the newsroom. Loved mm-hmm. him on the newsroom. Something else. Even though I wanted to slap the shit out of him, but that I think that's why I loved him so that was much. The character. Something else right. in the adaptation. Appa and Momo in the. I'd say in the show they actually kind of had characterization, like, like, that, yes. Am I crazy for yeah. saying that? Like, no. In the show, like, Oppa's sort of. Well, he's a character. He has. Yeah, his... yeah he's like lo- he's like loyal and all that stuff. And oh, he how, goes, they even it gave goes him even the beyond char- that. He he had com- you know, they they gave him comedic bits, but again, that comes down to things that I think don't translate well from animation. So much of the problems of that that movie have to do with the problems with translating animation. Uh, to the live action. There are certain things if, if you had if you had a giant animated flying bison walking around licking people or you know eating Sokka just to drool him back out <laughs> and literally he just Sokka just kind of and in the as a cartoon it was a fun cute moment just bleh. in the movie you if you did that people would think how stupid Stupid! This is it. It's it's one of those things that works better in a cartoon. Just like all of the bending worked better as a cartoon yep. because you could make those move those missions move fast, and therefore you could make it all happen faster. I think Shyamalan was too focused on the on making the martial artistry itself the star yep. and make the martial artistry shine. Did, the, did they ever do uh, uh, Ang's? Uh, Wind speeder, the little ball under him in the movie. No, oh, yeah, See? terrible. Right, and, and that that, that was a establishes character right away. It so establishes his character. It, it it's things like that that make that terrible. Details are details, and I can you know they 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 took you can Wolverine, change the plot points, but if you don't get the characters right, they made Wolverine. Them. A six foot three Goliath compared to the five foot two that he was, and he's got a great singing voice. And he, but <laughs> he was, but the character was amazing for almost twenty years. Yeah. He really was because Hugh Jackman got to he understood what it was about the character of Wolverine that we love. Brian Singer, it's one of the few things that he's gotten right over his entire career mm-hmm. in this. 
understood what it was about the characters that we love so that we could accept a six foot three Wolverine because that detail wasn't as important as who the person was. I guarantee you, if you had a white kid playing Sokka, okay, who had the animated spirit and the life and the cockiness of Sokka from that animated series, you wouldn't care one bit that he was white because he pulled it off because he was able to do what what was needed to be done on the screen. But because you have these failings in this, this kid as an actor, in this script, in developing his character, and this director for not knowing what to bring out from mm-hmm. this actor, those are the three things that led to this. Because of all that, now you care that now you care more that it was cast by a white kid. If he came out and knocked it out of the park, you wouldn't have noticed any of it. Well, I would have noticed a little bit, but I get I get your point. Like acting, yeah. If he had just done really well and like the character was written well, I would have been decently okay with them casting a white dude. Right. right. And it's one of the things that I've had to look, like like uh, Batfleck, you know, Ben Affleck playing Batman. I don't hate Ben Affleck at all. I hate his Batman. But what I hate about his Batman has nothing to do with his performance. It has everything to do Character. with what what the writers and the director had him doing yep. on screen. Yeah, to mm-hmm. be honest, I feel like Ben Affleck has like a lot of potential to play a really good Batman. I I I, I he think had the, a good potential to play a good Daredevil. Just unfortunately, the script and the characterization were wrong. I don't know how much the characterization wrong was wrong with him in that movie, but the pace of that movie was so far fucking off. And they, they, the, the comedic moments that they tried to bring in there didn't fit quite right. Hey, bullseye. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but the Colin thing is, Farrell was actually one of the better points right. in the movie. And the thing, and you know, that, 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 that movie actually caused them to redesign the bullseye character in the comics to give him the bullseye scar on his forehead because... Before Which you that, think he's Silver Age of Comics? That would have been the obvious thing. Well, it was painted on his forehead. I'll show you my. I'll show you my figure I got in the other room yeah. that I painted up. It was. It was. It was always you know a thing on his costume. Yeah. <laughs> there were attempts at comedic moments. Yes, um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I own the director's cut. If you ever want to come over and watch, oh Rob. boy. Um, but no, I, I mean, Colin Farrell's Daredevil was actually. The one thing that I truly liked about it. You mean Bullseye? Yeah. What did I say? Daredevil? travel? Yeah. Yeah, no, Bullseye. Colin Farrell's Bullseye was the one thing that I did like about that movie because he felt right. He felt like a psychopath. Mm-hmm. And he proved himself to be a psychopath when he choked the old lady out with a peanut. Come yeah. on. For being annoying. Yeah. That is that totally a Lester thing to do. How about when he freaking flicked the toothpicks into that dude's throat at the bar in the, when he was introduced? Yep. That's bullseye. Actually, That's you know it. what? The fact that he had the bullseye scarred into his forehead should have been. Do you know the how first thing. in the comics? Do you know how he cut uh, Electra's throat before he killed her? With a playing card. Stole it from Gambit. <laughs> there is love. <laughs> Did for, he actually? There's some love for Michael Clark Duncan because I love Michael Clark Duncan in general, but uh, I thought. Uh, I thought they did a disservice for him. He was a big dude, and I get that. He did not have the menace. I, I think Vincent D'Onofrio's got the characters the right. A- acting. And yeah. additionally, why you got to bring the brother in just to make him the criminal? What the fuck is up with that? Seriously. Yeah. It's like, okay, and I get it. You want to you, you, you diversify. Why the fuck are you bringing in the brother just to make him the criminal? Well, <laughs> They could have made him like they could have made him last longer. They could have made him more like, uh, uh, like Alex Luther type, where like he was more pervasive and he didn't die at the yeah. End of the oh yeah, well, yeah. It, but the thing is, they haven't got nobody's gotten Lex Luther right until recently. Yeah. I, as much as I love Gene Hackman, I hated his Lex Luther. I I like the Lex Luther that we had on Smallville. Mm-hmm. He was uh, good, but that's because he was more sympathetic. I love John Cryer's Lex Luthor because he is the perfect mix sure. of genius and megalomaniac. You know who is a really good Lex Luthor? A pimp Kane. Clancy Brown. Yes, yes. I was going to mention him too. Kane, but that was because you Bruce Tim. Term pimp. 
Yeah. Um, awesome. Clancy, you know, it, it, you know, Paul Dini and um, Bruce Tim, Tim. Yeah. understand the characters of the DC universe. I swear to God, they should have never handed the reins over. I, I, I like Zack Snyder. I really do. No. And I don't want to be <laughs> someone don't. who shits. Look, I love 300. To this day, I love 300. I love his Watchmen. Uh, sucker punch. I, I tried. Oh, no. Sorry. Can't. Sucker Punch is terrible. 300 was a little bit better. 300 was pretty good. But he has the wrong vision. Yeah. Nope, his character, his vision is perfect for a dystopia. Dystopic heroes like Rorschach and Night Owl and Osmandeus. He was, his vision He's was probably perfect. Sh- pissed off that he did not do the boys. I mean that he's perfect he'd, for he'd that. Be perfect for the he boys. would be absolutely brilliant to be a part of that. So, but his 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 yeah. You know, they, they earlier this week they were circulating a picture that came off the set of um 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 his Justice League. Yeah, and it was something that Patty Jenkins had to fight to get changed because you remember in Wonder Woman the picture that uh, Bruce sends to her and says how how the hell old are you? Where it's her and Steve. Originally, that pic- picture was supposed to be from the Carthaginian War, and she had she was holding uh, three heads by their hair, mm-hmm. severed heads. Oh my god! I am so glad they changed that. Right, and and it in reality, yes, she is a warrior. She is an Amazon yeah, warrior princess. Just... Yes, she would have been violent, but that's not what the character of Wonder Woman. And yes, I know, I, I understand. In the comics, she's she's cut the head off of a Medusa. She's you know these things have happened, but they are the rare occurrences. They you know they aren't the everyday thing, and that's where I think that he is not right for the DCU because his vision of what a hero is, his vision is perfect for the Punisher. His perfect is is perfect for someone like Judge Dredd. But when you're talking about those heroes, those those shining bright points. That, that have a moral code. He's not the right, and that's okay. It's okay that he's not the right guy for him. I think that if DC was smart, they would turn around tomorrow and they would say, hey, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim, yep. we want you to develop a complete DC universe for film. We want you yeah. two to be the Kevin Feige of our universe. Honestly, the saddest part about the Zack Snyder DC movies is that they are cast near perfect. I know. Like, uh, Henry Cavill as is Superman is brilliant. awesome. He's amazing casting. Gal Gadot is amazing now as watch Wonder Woman. The Count of Monte Cristo. And you oh, can yeah. See Henry Cavill's a team. But yeah. yeah, like, the one casting decision I. Also, uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman really made me fall in love with the character. He, but, was, a, he was a lame character up until that. I will give you that. But. The one thing, Jesse Eisenberg is Lex. Luthor. Nope, that's bad. That was yeah, bad casting. No. I would have, ca- I probably would have gone with Brian Cranston. I think that I think that's a bit on the nose with the with the you know him be, having shaved his head and just gone through all of that. He just got I tired of he's, Breaking Bad. And he's well, no, I, I I think he would be brilliant in it. Yeah, I but I would like to see so yeah. That the problem is Jesse Eisenberg was out of the box thinking. I'd like to see uh, someone who understands the character have a little. It could be a complete unknown for all I care. Or Brian Cranston would be great. There are a lot of actors that can bring gravitas, and that's the thing that that carries the character of Les, Lex Luthor, is the gravitas that he brings to the role. He is a deadly serious. Super genius yeah. megalomaniac, and that's what uh, John Cryer. I would have never guessed. I would have never guessed Ducky. Yeah, and um, uh, what? Uh, Char- not, not Charlie Harper, but the, the other Harper brother from Two and a Half Men. I would have never guessed that. Hey, that Charlie guy, Sheen did some shit to him. I He's never would. I, I never would have guessed that he'd be a brilliant Lex Luthor, but he <laughs> absolutely was. And. Yeah, uh, shoot, what was I about to say? I don't Crap. know. I knew it had something to... Wait, yeah, Lex Luthor is... Um, I might be a little off here, but Lex Luthor is kind of like the Grand Admiral Thrawn of the DC Universe, Oh, right? that's not off, far off at all. 
Yeah. It, the only difference is that he will occasionally put on a power suit and get his own hands dirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, he's actually a playable character in the first Injustice game. <laughs> Although in the in the Injustice in like the Injustice split timeline, he's actually a good guy working with Batman's insurgency to take down Superman. <laughs> he is he he is he is Thrawn, but he's not afraid to get his hand dirty. But the thing is, Thrawn thinks that. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, he's a he's a thinking man's villain. He is the opposite of Superman, where Superman is the brawn. Lex Luthor is supposed to be the brain. Plus, also, just a little something in for Batman v Superman. I feel like it would have made more sense if, in the end, instead of creating Doomsday, he made Metallo. Like, I sure, absolutely. I, I I'd have. I, I'll absolutely give you a hundred percent on that. Anyway, yeah. all right. So I think yes, and Henry Cable is in the Count of Monte Cristo. Yep. Go check out that movie. It is a fantastic I love that movie. movie. Uh, Luis, uh, Luis, what is his name now? He's the guy. He was in. God damn it! You're talking about it's Richard Harris, Jim Caviezel. Uh, community. The the he was the he was the one famous graduate of the community college in Community. Luis Guzman. Oh, Luis Guzman. Yes. Yes. As his manservant. Yes. That, yeah, I mean, you got Guy Pierce, who's fucking amazing in everything he did. Um, yeah. Um, Guy, yeah, Guy Pierce, uh, J- uh, James Jim Caviezel. Who? If you guys, James Frain. If you watch Gotham, he played um, this guy. Uh, wait, where's the camera? Is that the Riddler? No. I, uh, there's too much glare. Let me see. Sorry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah, yeah. you recognize the who'd guy. Who did he play? Uh, he played Villafort. Uh, he was also Jarvis in Tron Legacy. Mm. Um, he's in a lot of. He's actually in Star Trek Discovery. It's Sarek. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, cool. Yeah. All right. So next yeah. week, um, next week we're playing by ear a little bit. Okay. It's going to depend on Todd. Yep. Um, Todd is getting over COVID. He should be. No longer contagious after this weekend, uh, but we'll talk to him. We'll see where he's at, yeah. see how he's feeling, and ho- and hopefully be able to have our convention conversation with him. Uh, then, otherwise, we'll figure out a topic to come up on, uh, to talk about next week. Avatar. <laughs> oh gosh, I want to talk about it in depth. Half track mind, I swear I'm gonna to throw, God. I'm going to bring a cabbage, and I'm going to actually throw it at him. I would love that. He would love that. <laughs> My cabbages. Okay. I'm, I'm just so, going to bring a bunch of stuff that were represented from the cartoon and just start throwing it at him. I am Metal Lord. <laughs> and on that note... I'm Tony. I'm Pasquale. And I'm Joey. You've had us monologuing. Thanks for joining us. You guys have a great night.